My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to The Last Divinity. We're going to be continuing with Covenant 25 Random Random. Double Fortifying, Double Helico Crystallis. We have the base, non-exiled version of each of these characters. Interesting. We also have an Inflame here. Got the Hornbreaker Princess, our champion. Okay, let's start looking. Stygian Banner next to the Merchant of Steel. Stygian Banner next to a Divine Temple. Two copies of Fortify in the base deck. We're looking for a frontline unit to stand in front of a Hornbreaker Prince. Probably use spells to modify the ability to get slays. Go for Brawler Reaper. Upgrade some spells such as the Helical Chrysalis and things like that. With things like Extreme Stone or Piercing or things like that. Possibility of end up duping the unit that we get here. Okay. I think this actually is going to be an aggressive push. Uh, for, for a double Stygian unit here. And then possibility of even duping that Stygian unit. And then going for an incant floor. We may need one capacity. Okay. I think I'm pretty settled on that. Uh. Oh. Well. So the two fortifies... The thing is, the inflames make the inflame and helical crystallis make this so much easier for us to take than it previously was. Okay, let's do it. When played, your champion gets plus fifty percent attack. See, it's going to be a scaling champion regardless. Scaling our magic power actually seems pretty exciting to me. Taking that. Okay. So is there a world where the Hornbreaker Prince Wrathful version is our front line? I guess. No, we'll still go with this, I think. Definitely take the unit draft. We're looking for any Stygian units we can find. Hmm. I do want to set up low-ish. do much against the enemy's healing there. So what I'm really looking for is in flame. Flame is here, but it's very high cost. You're going to deal 12 damage. Actually, you're going to deal 18 if you get to that top line. Uh, I could throw in a single torch to prevent a lot of that. I used to say present, uh, prevent six of it. So we give you Rage, and then you survive an extra attack from Chains the Sided. And you have the ability to put out a lot more damage from the End Flame. Honestly, it's probably just double Helical Crystallis on the boss right now. That probably puts us in the best position for actually winning here. If we kill the back line, we prevent five healing. But if we instead target the front line, we do six damage. So it feels like it works out better on this side for us. Crystallis. 
That was always going to be a little bit of a rough fight for us. There's the ritual battle. It's exactly why I took the volatile gauge, by the way. Uh, Crypt Builder. Yep. We have a lot of expensive spells, so I'm very, very, very happy with the choices I made. <sighs> I see, I see. Well, it's the Siren of the Sea, right? Multi-strike and encamp for armor. Are you kidding me? What's in here? A decent amount worse. Decent amount worse. I could put a Titan Sentry on a different line. Like, I'm not against that plan. Um, It's just that's not the unit that I'm going to want to enhance with the Siren of the Sea. Sure, we'll take that for some sweet. <laughs> Definitely give the multi-strike to the Siren of the Sea. Now it's just, do I give you incant to gain armor? I'm not going to put you on the same floor as the other incant triggers, so is that really beneficial to us, or do we just give you a heart stone? We just give you a heart stone. And then we're not going to merge any units here. We'll do that in the next area. Extreme stone, definitely still worth considering. Like, that's a lot of damage on a crypt builder. It's a very good dupe target at that point as well. Has a randomized cost. 210 to the front of a unit and push it to the back. Um, Helical Crystallis also benefits hugely from it too. Applying it two times, having the ability to actually hit two different targets. Whereas this can only hit one target. Uh, I think I actually do want the Crypt Builder with that upgrade though. Move onwards. Combust enemy units enter with spikes three. I think that's not going to be a problem. Literally just based off of the power of our spells. Thank you for sending us the easy ones. Take an Ember Drain into the next turn. Not too keen on it, but it happens. Uh, fine. Yeah. Crypt build at the front line of there, but it's basically just so that I have the ability to play three spells this turn, get a magic power out of it. Second Ritual of Battle, both very expensive. Second Crypt Builder. Okay. Okay. Uh, reducing the cost of things actually right now would be really, really good. Let me make this abundantly clear because almost every time I get Volatile Gauge and then I reduce the cost of spells, I get someone telling me that... Usually that I'm dumb because it doesn't work. It does. It applies after the randomization from the Volatile Gauge. So if you reduce the cost of something by one and then pull it out randomly, instead of being between one and three costs, it will be between zero and two. If it has a negative two in it, it will between, uh, be between zero and one. It occurs afterwards. I'm not making a mistake when I'm doing it. I'm doing it intentionally. I'll just be very, very clear about that because every time I do it, someone says I'm making a mistake. Oh, bugger. Uh, yeah, we take Capricious Reflection here. We do. We do. Uh, that means the Stygian unit possibly comes with an upgrade. It does come up. With oh, my God. Really? Oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> plus one to cost. <laughs> Eel Gorgon is the new rare for Stygian. Has Incant to gain Multi-Strike 1 and has Resolve to remove all status effects. <sighs> what are we going to do with you? 
I think we just put it in the, the unit we already have. Siren of the Sea, that is. Because it removes all status effects on Resolve, so it removes all of its own multi-strike each Resolve. I really wish there was a handy guide in-game to tell you what is counted as a status effect, what is counted as a buff, what is counted as a debuff. Um, there are, I think, actually for buff and debuff, but I don't think there are for status effects. Well, so status effect is going to be anything that Primordium passes forward, right? Primordium passes forward status effects when it has the superfood chain. So that means that Rage would also be lost the way that you, or in this deck, I, would primarily scale the damage of the Eel Gorgon would be lost. Yeah, no, it's 100% it's take the Eel Gorgon and put it into the Siren of the Sea. As much as I don't want it to be that, it is that. Um... Eel Gorgon into Seren of Sea. Another extreme stone. Wow. The thing is, these extreme stones actually are doing huge things for us. So I think I can still avoid, uh, afford rather, the amount of ridiculous pack shards I've built for myself right now. Uh, 10 pyre health, petrified heart. Everything just gets plus 10 health. By base? Yeah. 100%. Alright, Daedalus. We should be comfy here. So what I really want is to set up the Siren of the Sea on the top floor with as much power as it possibly can get as early as possible. The only thing is, unfortunately, like, what I really need is extra energy. That's the big thing that I really need. Um, I'm probably even going to take extra energy off this line. Siren of the Sea needs more health scaling as well. Unless I start going for armor things. <sighs> the main point here is Ritual of Battle needs to get played out. Uh, definitely. And then after that, what I can really do is, like, Shiny Steward. I uh, love that. Leave myself without an energy next turn. I'm not thrilled about it, but... Kind of looks like it's the way things go here, right? Got big spells left in the deck, and we've also got a frontliner that deals a billion damage, so I feel pretty good about this. Um, one, two, three. I'm just looking to cast as many spells as possible, and specifically three if possible. Or at least three if possible. I'm also trying to prioritize armor where possible. It's possible there. Mm, all in cans on that floor are good. Trip builds it should be enough. really feel like I should be giving Rage the backline as well. Although it's less effective because it has less multi-strike, it will still be on the field after the Siren and is dead. Good. Oh, 
All right, well, now I have to put up or shut up, right? Am I going to take energy? Double the amount of armor on a unit, consume permafrost. Not bad. Discard your hand, draw five that is removed of its consume. In a deck with the Volatile Gauge, I can't turn that down. That's a reload of my hand. Uh, do any of these really want to go into the Titan Century for any big reason? Like, it theoretically could. Uh, also theoretically could. Do they need to? Is that part of my game plan right now? I don't think so. So, the capacity play is where I go to the hell vent now and I've got a second copy of Siren of the Sea. Hmm. When's my next hell vent after that? My next hell vent after that is row six. So I could get a second copy of one right before. That is to say, right before picking up an extra pip. With the amount of draw that I have access to, the extra energy will never, ever go astray. Which also means I'm very unlikely to go for the dupe here. Well, I mean, duping coal, uh, you know, a deep offering is not bad. Um, if I could upgrade it first, that'd be a bit better, but... We'll see, we'll see. Uh, the thing is, over here, I still have upgrades that I would really like to get and cards that I would really like to removal. So. Wow. The thing is, giving quick to the Siren of the Sea actually solves so many of the HP problems on that floor. Okay, you get that. Um, large stone or another heart stone on the Titan Sentry or endless. Actually, all three of those would be particularly good here. Look at the Hellhorned unit next. Um, Steelworker doesn't look too bad, do it. No. No, 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 no. You're doing too much for the deck at that point. Second unit during a turn gives you three energy. Sometimes that will end up being a boost of our energy. The only problem is, like right now, I'm about to remove two shiny stewards from the deck. Taking the collection of tails, we actually do use rage in this build as well. Get two shiny stewards out of here. So the slay line, by the way, with the hornbreak prince just got significantly worse. I think it actually might be Wrathful now, right? And then Wrathful just protects the uh, the Siren of the Sea up in the top line. Yeah, because I'm going to want to give the Rage to the Siren of the Sea because of the fact that it has quick attacks. That does mean I'm competing against the Wrathful's ability to get slays. Um, which is a little bit of a problem. But I don't think... I don't think that's actually like a dead stop for us. Let's free roll here too. There's the large stone. Yeah, I don't think that's so much of a dead stop for us. So me this game multi-strike. It's totally fine by me. Random artifact could be huge. I can set up even on the midline right now. <laughs> ah yes, drew into nothing I can play. <laughs> that old strat. Uh, yikes. That's really sad. We're gonna have to leave that collector. Oh, that's wild. The Hornbreaker Prince actually does get this kill right now. 
Even if I go for the inflame buff here too. Nice. Get that slay, Hornbreaker man. Okay, well, no more slays for you, I think, from this point on. It's okay, it happens. One, two, three. Actually, you got to slay here, as long as I don't cast anything on this floor. But unfortunately, I am an incant gamer. Uh oh. Ah, I forgot that the default rings are in the deck. In the hand. Oh. Oops. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll play the crit builders out, I'm pretty sure. That one will do that. See, the thing about this is I still think, like, double ritual of battle here is going to be the most impactful play we can make. <laughs> okay, I'm going to kill one of the backliners and then deep offering, inverting the order of the enemies. Send that out, send that out. Yeah, exactly. You're not allowed to hit me at all. And you summon the first imp unit each turn. Gain an energy and draw a card. The problem with this is there's almost no imp that I would put into this deck. I'm taking the money. Actually going to be turning that one down. Uh, Spike of the Hell Horn. Ooh, a branding right. A branding right that's got an ember stone in, no less. Wee bit more survivability for me. Take it. Uh, Ice Storm is going to increase its damage every time we trigger the forgotten name. And obviously it's got its cost reduced, so it's easier to play. Divine artifacts. See, the thing is, I think I can also get away without any of these. I'm gonna take the money. No divinity of these artifacts for me. Thank you, sir. Uh, merchant magic reroll. What I'm looking for in the merchant magic would literally just be removal. Uh, not removal, sorry. It would be um, reductions of cost. Yeah, yeah, it'd just be, uh, like, a reduction of costs on deep offering and ritual of battle or something like that. Like, what I'm actually really keen to do right now is go to every Merchant of Magic possible, which it appears like there are two more after this available for us, uh, and just get as many removals of costs as I possibly can. That's the next way we advance the deck. Uh, cost removal. Or... Well, before we do that, let's check the Divine Temple, because Value Stone would make a difference. I don't think Extreme Stone makes a difference anymore. Or at least I don't think it makes a difference worth its cost. Do that. Reroll. I take plus 20 magic power and consumes now. Get them out of the deck in the first cycle. But what if they have a bad associated cost? It's easier to just remove them. Hold over. Ooh. There's definitely an appeal to hold over. It's just limited by the fact that it feels like... Uh, maybe branding right needs to be held over. So, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's just limited by the fact that it feels like whatever I get back in hand is often going to be too high of a cost for me to actually play it. Rudy uh, And then I do need to save some money. I mean, in the next area, I'm going to a Hellvent and a Hellsless Horde and Dupe. Hellvent is the Dupe. Oops. The plus 10 does look like it would just be at home on this Ice Storm. I think I'm going to give that to the Ice Storm. Could have given that an extreme stone instead, but it's okay. I think this one will suit a bit better.
Do I want to cast two spells up here? Really? Yeah, just get the shiny sewer down the cycle. Let's get the end flame up there as well. I think deep offering past that point. All new hands. Um. Original battle pretty much confirms the next line easily for us. Let's keep building armor where possible. I got energy onto the next boss as well and abandon the plan to dupe the Siren of the Sea? It feels like duping the Siren of the Sea is how I project enough damage in the later... Uh, the, the later boss fights, TLD specifically. Sorrow of Sorrows does have sweep. However, I don't think they're going to be able to overcome my damage. Deep offering for the auto cast right there. Also a draw, just in case any of those happen to be things that were hit with an Ember Stone to have a reduced one cost as well as rolled one on the Voltable Gauge. Easy pass there in retrospect. Merchant's Mines would actually be pretty huge. Uh, Permafrost Holdover. Yeah, but that might have a random cost. Um, no, that's also a skip. Cleansing Water is far more effective than the other. As for our double removal, let's get the shiny stewards out of here again. First cycle considerations, etc., etc., so on and so forth. Are we going to dupe the Siren of the Sea? I feel like more and more I'm leaning towards yes, but the problem is I also really desperately want energy. But we are about to go to a Merchant of Magic and then a Merchant of Magic afterwards. We're going for a double removal there and this Merchant of Magic and the next Merchant of Magic are literally just about reducing the cost of our cards. Um, which I think makes them a lot easier to play, making it easier to take this, making it easier to take capacity. I also think I need the Divine Boons. So the counter to the Scourge cards for us is supposed to be Titan Sentry going down on the bottom line, but uh, look what just happens. So, well, also it's not going to do anything against the Absorber of that size. I think this means I have to set up in the middle line. I don't like it, but I think I have to do this. Uh, weight of contrition is just coming in at any random cost. It's really rough. There you go. They draw them with random costs. Can you please kill the target I need you to kill, please? You tried really hard. Gotta give you credit where credit's due. You certainly, I think, at least, tried. 
I can't leave all of them in the deck, otherwise eventually I'm just going to draw a hand that's a bunch of 10 cost weights of contrition. Again, a very expensive Titan Sentry. Really unfortunate. We get those two out before I use the deep offering though. And this torch is just not enough. Although now they will be. <laughs> right when there aren't any more absolvers. Uh, I think I actually just let that to resolve and remove two more from my deck. Yeah, we're dead. There's no way to project the damage through the back line. <sighs> yeah. This... I feel like I definitely could have won that fight with a different play, uh, line of play. With a little bit more interrogation uh, into attempting to try and get wrathful slays rather than buffing up the backliner even bigger. Dang. Go to the run summary. I, I I get a bit taken aback because I know I definitely could have won that, hundred percent. If if I redid that match, I would be able to win. Uh, such a good run. That's okay though. That's okay. Hey, we're not dying on the fifth boss at the absolute least anymore. For the moment, we've got bones hard bags proudly. There's our custom challenge code. My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been The Last Divinity. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content of the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.